Are you experiencing burping throughout the day? Perhaps you feel nauseous in the morning when you first wake up, or you feel like you're not sure if you're full, if you're hungry, you might even have some upper GI symptoms. Well, today we're going to jump into the topic of H. pylori, which is common in 50% of the population. Hi, my name is Dr. Ariane Messimer. I'm a functional medicine practitioner, doctor of physical therapy, registered dietitian, and owner of the Movement Paradigm Integrative Health. So today we are going to talk about this very, very common presentation of H. pylori. So it is a bacterial infection that presents itself in the stomach. It can happen for several reasons. One, it is highly transmissible. So if you are sharing your drinks with your family or your friends, this is a very easy way to transmit H. pylori. But in addition to that, one of the common ways is that we can have poor digestion and a protective mechanism. So maybe we have decreased stomach acid. Maybe we have decreased pancreatic elastase, so our ability to break down proteins, carbs, and fats. We have this decreased digestive capability, specifically in the stomach with low stomach acid. This can contribute to an increased risk of getting H. pylori. So even if we there's two people that share the same drink with someone who has it, one person may get it and one person may not get it, just like any other infection. So this is also one of the main reasons why we get peptic ulcers. So in the past, we would always say that an ulcer was due to stress. And while that there is some truth to that based on stress driving inflammation and gastric changes in decreasing stomach acid, the primary reason that we get that is because of H. pylori specifically. So when I see adults that I go through their timeline and see and understand that as a kid, they were having all of these GI issues and they were typically treated with a proton pump inhibitor, I always question, did they have H. pylori at that time and it wasn't a diagnosed or treated appropriately. So it is something that can progress quite significantly to gastritis and ultimately peptic ulcers if it is not treated. And it can also cause a whole host of other symptoms. As I mentioned, some of the more common symptoms that, that I see patients experience, burping is one of the most common. So if someone says I'm burping all the time or they really pay attention to it, they realize they're burping quite a bit throughout the day. If they are waking up feeling nauseous and just feel like they can't eat in the morning and they feel like throughout the day, they're not sure if they're hungry or full. All of these are very common symptoms, including bloating, including your classic reflux type symptoms. And with any GI issue, all of the symptoms can overlap. So you can appreciate that there could be other symptoms as well, even bowel changes, constipation or diarrhea as well. So the most conventional test is actually a breath test. However, a really great way to test for H. pylori is a stool test. And so you can test specifically for H. pylori as well as do it as part of a comprehensive stool analysis. Now, what I've learned is that if you find it on a stool test, but you don't find it on a breath test, you should treat the H. pylori. If you find it on a breath test and you don't find it on the stool test, still treat the H. pylori. If it's coming up in whatever test you have, I would recommend treating it because it can cause so many downstream effects. If we're looking at a comprehensive stool test and we see that there's dysbiosis, that imbalance of bacteria, if we see that there's leaky gut, if we see that there's high inflammatory markers, but if there's H. pylori, we want to actually treat the H. pylori first. It, it becomes high on the priority list because it's an infection. So if you don't treat that, it can keep causing downstream effects. So it's really critical to address that if you find it. So if you find H. pylori, what do you do with it? The good news is it's actually fairly easy to treat and I've seen successful outcomes in it repeatedly. So it used to be treated solely with antibiotics, but in those cases, it is only working in 50% of the cases. And in addition to that, as you can imagine, with antibiotics is causing a whole host of other issues. So it can actually be treated with mastic gum, which is from the unique resin of a Mediterranean tree. And this can be used up to 1,000 milligrams twice a day for two to three months and can be extremely effective in remedying H. pylori. Although someone might be experiencing low stomach acid in addition to having H. pylori, it's recommended to not necessarily use hydrochloric acid or stomach acid as a supplement while treating the H. pylori. I think this can be reassessed after you finish the treatment successfully, but a lot of times when they're having, someone might be having some of these upper GI issues, it is because of the H. pylori and then 
once again, you can treat the subsequent low stomach acid as needed. There are different schools of thought on this, but clinically speaking, this is what I found to be very helpful is treating it and then addressing the low stomach acid. And last but not least, make sure to not share your drinks and food with others, even if you love them. And uh, if this was helpful, please give it a like, give it a share. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Movement Paradigm for weekly tips of mindset, nutrition, and movement. Our goal is to help you live your best life, to heal, transform, and more importantly, thrive. If you need our help more individually, please reach out for a discovery session. We would love the opportunity to help you in any of these areas. And in addition to that, you can feel free to join our app, The Movement Paradigm. We have monthly challenges. We have live q and We have an amazing community and all geared towards whole body health. So hope to see you there.